Hey, yes, yes, y'all. It's Iconic coming at you with another Blood Knight Bill video. Let's go. All right, YouTube fan. So in this one, um, I just did a video on my PVP Blood Knight build. We're going to be using that same build for PVE. I've actually been trying it out today, and I think it works pretty well for both scenarios here. Um, so we're not going to change up anything. I'm going to run you guys through an Elder Riff and a solo dungeon and just sh show you what it looks like in both scenarios. So real quick, just in case you didn't catch the last one, we're using Horns of the Hex. Siphon Blood is no longer channeled and now moves with you. Count of the Eaves, Whirling Strike also grants 5% damage reduction. We're mainly doing this because I don't have anything else better to put in this slot. And it's awakened, so we do get a little bit of cooldown reduction. Furnum's Birth Mantle, Spear Flurry also causes enemies to bleed. Made to Wander, Spear Flurry now causes you to dash forward. Whirling Strike now combusts, causing enemies to burn. Red Concord. Sprig of Hawthorne, Skewer also increases your damage done by 13%. The Basolver, Skewer now causes you to leap into the air and slam into target location. Hanging Chalice, after, shadow ed after Shadow's Edge hits an enemy, two blades ricochet out randomly targeting nearby enemies. Um, we did of course change from Gladiator Paragon to Weaver for PvE content. And then we also changed our Warband Room um, back to the Attacker for damage. The set hasn't changed. We're using four piece gloom guides as well as two piece Vithus. And the idea behind this is to increase our beneficial effects from our legendary gems as well as some of our abilities um, by 30% here. And then to pretty much always have some sort of critical hit chance going um, from either Mother's Lament, four piece gloom guides, um, this will stack with our base crit hit chance that we have on our gear, which is 20% right now. So yeah, um, we're going to be doing doing a whole lot of crits. <clears throat> Alright, so I wanted to show you both potential areas for PvE, um, where content is just scaled to you as a solo player. Um, so this will be overworld content, elder rifts. And then to also show you guys um, how it performs in an instance where it's scaled to the party. Um, so four people in this instance with the solo dungeon. So um, what we're going to do here, nice, we've got a blue pack. We're going to engage him with Skewer, Whirlwind, and that's usually going to take them out right away. And we don't have Mother's Lament up, so the next pack that we see, yeah, it might be up. We hit him with Siphon. And then we hit him with our um, Fear, uh, with our Spear Flurry. Have you nothing else? So yeah, this damage is pretty, pretty good. Um, the only thing I will say is I was using Swarm of Bats and I took that out to make room for Spear Flurry because a lot of the essences were in the same spots. And I do miss the mobility for overall content a little bit, but I do think the upside of the damage potential and having all these crits makes up for it. My initial assessment here is I definitely think <clears throat> we're not going to have an issue, um, obviously, with Overworld. But, I mean, that's true of pretty much almost anything that you're going to try. It's just what what's the most efficient. But I think, I mean, this is a little more bursty than I would like for Solo Dungeon. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to perform in the dungeon, but I think we're just fine inside of the Elder Rift, ob obviously. Alright, let's get this boss spawned. 
That should do it. Your screens are distracted. So skewer, whirlwind, dash, dash, dash. Siphon blood, primary attack, down. <clears throat> Now, it wasn't obviously the fastest run. I'm not saying that was. I wasn't really going for a speed run right there, but just kind of paying attention to the damage numbers, what it looked like, how often we were critting. And I mean, we saw a lot of, a lot of orange and yellow numbers there. All right, let's head over to the dungeon. I'll cut you guys in just a sec. Yeah, I definitely like this one for testing in particular because of the four bosses. Um, it's a pretty good gauge of how much damage you're doing. And you can gauge it on the three bosses and then with Sargoth. So, so far, this, this actually feels really good. Definitely uh, better than I, I thought it was going to be. And so far, it hasn't been too big of an issue, but I think there is maybe a time, and we'll probably see it with the bosses, where we've used all of our skills. We're only doing our primary attack. Um, the cooldowns aren't that long, thankfully, but I can definitely see there being just a little bit of an issue um, as we're waiting for skills to come back up, and maybe we only have one charge or something. Um, so this definitely has, I think, yeah, a little more potential to be on the bursty side. So dealing with solo um, elites inside of a dungeon can sometimes be a little bit handful by yourself. That wasn't too bad. Those were only blues, but that part did take a little longer than I think felt like normal with like some of my higher DPS classes like Demon Hunter and Wizard. But here's what we're really for. Let's see how these bosses fare up. So we got it halfway down pretty quick. We're out of skills though. Hey, you know, not half bad. For 5.7 million HP there on a boss, that, that wasn't too bad solo. Yeah, I definitely did feel the initial issue there of, of not having any skills ready but it, again it wasn't too bad siege breakers getting into us this one took a little longer So yeah, what I like is all three of these bosses have 5.7 million HP. So you can definitely kind of gauge it between the three bosses. And then Sargoth has eight, I want to say almost nine million. On 
one right. And same with this one. That that actually felt not half bad. I think the thing is, like, I'm used to seeing, like, so many attacks come out from the Demon Hunter and from the Wizard, the way that I run them. That these ones, like, they're hitting hard, like, the individual attack, attack itself. Um, so that skewer hits really hard, but it's only, especially on a boss, it's only one hit that's coming down. Um, the Whirlwind, you might not actually hit it the way you would think you're, you're going to hit it. And we're not going to use our ultimate here. I want to just really see what the build looks like, how that's performing. And you you can miss a skewer as well, or a spear flurry as well. And I mean, he's got 8.3 million, so this. I mean, didn't feel too bad either. A little bit longer than the five millions, but not, not by much. Um, I'll need to start timing these. That'll, that'll be something I get into at some point uh, with these videos. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. I've shown it to you in PvP as well as PVE. Um, I actually kind of like it for both. I definitely think there's a modification or two to make. Um, to tweak it a little bit, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comment. Um, have you run any build that's sort of like this or similar to it? Um, again, I'm calling this the crit crit hit build, and I've, I've enjoyed it so far. Uh, we'll see what else we can tweak to make this one better. As always, I know you guys know what to do. I don't have to tell you, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.